We've got one more statewide elected official in the House that deserves a round of applause and a moment at the podium. Please join me in welcoming our Attorney General, Kwame Rose. Um, 
that he was really at. Really, really, they, they deserve applause because um, it was nonstop. It's been nonstop. I don't, I don't even want to talk about it past tense because we're dealing with it now. And, and let me apologize ahead of time because I warned um, Tracy that I, I may have to leave early, and that's not because I'm trying to get out of here. Um, but I was parked outside uh, speaking to uh, some of the colleagues of the legislature, le legislators here about some important legislation that we're trying um, to pass, uh, hopefully this week, that will help us in, in, in our efforts to make sure that the governor's life-saving medications uh, stay, stay in place. And, and so I was having that conversation outside in the car, and the rest of my night will be uh, making, making phone calls. Let me tell you, it's been a great pleasure to serve as your attorney general. Um, we, I came to it by way of the uh, legislature, uh, 14 years of legislature, where um, I had an opportunity to vote on the ERA um, for, for Illinois uh, to become a state ratifying the ERA. Uh, little did I know that uh, a couple of years after I had an opportunity to vote on the ERA, I, would, I, along with the Attorneys General of Nevada and Virginia, are leading the fight to litigate to make sure that the ERA is recognized as the 28th Amendment. Yeah. And we continue to fight um, while President Trump I won't say gone, he's no longer president, thank God. Uh, but Trumpism lives on, and it lives on in places like Texas, where they're, where they're trying to roll back access to reproductive uh, health care. I want you to know that I and my staff have been engaged in that fight, not only in, with regards to the te Texas this action, but we're on an island here in the Midwest in terms of reproductive rights. And so we've taken lead in uh, a couple of lawsuits uh, that impacted access to reproductive health care in Missouri and Indiana uh, in amicus uh, briefs that we put forth in those efforts that were successful in both cases. So uh, we will continue with the rest of our colleagues throughout the country to, to, on, on this fight with regards to Texas and other jurisdictions where this will be will continue to pop up. And, and, and then finally, I just want to say one thing, because you know I, I, I was involved in, in I think the Safety Act was met, mentioned earlier today, and um, I applaud the, the Legislative Black Caucus for their efforts to, 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 to pass the Safety Act. There was one element of that that I, I, I was very much involved in, and, and, was enhancing our decertification so we can professionalize law enforcement here in the state of Illinois. And I want to be really, really clear about something because we're at a, 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 a very unique time and, and the, 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 the debate is, the, the, the environment for the debate around law enforcement reform uh, shifts, right? There's always a pendulum. And right after an incident like the murder of George Floyd, there's enthusiasm for reform, but the pendulum switch, uh, switches, right? And we're at a time where we're getting further and further away from that particular incident. And I want to just make sure that we, de de we, we, we reject the false dichotomies as we start talking about crime more and more. We have the capacity and we should have the will and the desire to be advocates against crime wherever it arises, even if it arises on the heels of peaceful protests where people are looting and stealing and being violent and being violent towards police officers. You can be against those things and still be for law enforcement reform. Still be for I say this because this is in the Republican sphere.
strategy book for next year's elections. It's going, there's going to be heavy focus on crime, and they're going to create the false narrative that because Democrats have been so bold to work on criminal justice and law enforcement reform, they have somehow undermined the effort to fight violence and to fight crime, and that is a lie. We can and we must do both, and rest assured that the Attorney General's office will do both. Thank you so much.